Welcome everybody to the Dub Nug Show where we talk about cannabis news and cannabis reviews. Today we have researchers published a record number of scientific studies about cannabis in 2022. The DEA finally ready to end federal marijuana research monopoly as they allow other people to start introducing cannabis into the study. Later in the week, I have a cannabis review on a certain strain that I have yet to pick up. I'm going to the dispensary tomorrow to pick it up. So stay tuned for later in this week, probably around Wednesday is when I will release that. So make sure you stay tuned for that. All right. Without further ado, let's get into the news. Starting with the DEA ready to end federal marijuana research monopoly. Agency notifies grower applicants. So the Drug Enforcement Agency, the DEA, on Friday notified several companies that moving forward, approving their applicants to become federally authorized marijuana manufacturers for research purposes. This is a significant development and one of the first cannabis-related moves out of the Biden administration that is currently a monopoly on federal cannabis cultivation, with the University of Mississippi having operated the only approved federal facility for the past half century. It was among almost five years ago DEA under President Obama first announced that it was accepting applicants for additional manufacturers. No approvals were made under the Trump administration and delays in getting acceptance has led to frustration and lawsuits in some cases among applicants. But Friday, the organization, including the biopharmaceutical research company, BRC, Scottsdale Research Inst Institute, SRI, Golf NA, Hemplex LLC, were notified by the agency that their requests were conditionally accepted. I wonder what the conditions are. The DEA is nearing at the end of its review of certain marijuana grower applicants, thereby allowing it soon register to additional entities authorized to produce marijuana for research purposes, the DEA said. Pending final approval, the DEA, based on currently available information, that the number of manufacturer applicants to cultivate marijuana from research needs in the U.S., appears to be consistent with the acceptable legal standards and relevant laws. DEA has therefore provided a memorandum of agreement, an MOA, to these manufacturers as a next step of approval process. So BRC CEO George Hoggins said that another press release after, after being finalized, this federal license will forever change the tra trajectory of business and medical cannabis industry. I mean, this is definitely a good thing where, because like they said, for a half century, for 50 years, everything has been that the federal government like knows of what everything that they go off of has all been done in research from Mississippi state university. And they only grow one strain, May, maybe a couple others, but they don't take anything that we're smoking out on the streets, anything you get from the dispensary, none of that. None of that has ever been looked at through a scientific lens from anyone who has a federal license, basically. So the federal government does not even look at the stuff that we're smoking. They've only ever looked at the stuff coming out of Mississippi State University, which nobody is even able to smoke. So this is a big step that we are actually able to get other outside federal agency applicants to actually start researching cannabis because as we all know there's a lot more out here than the federal government is even willing to look into so this is really good news when that will happen i don't really know but Moving on to the research that has been published, a record number of scientific studies about cannabis in 2022, Normal Analysts Show. So research researchers have published more than 4,300 studies on marijuana and its components in 2022, a new annual record. We need more research is easily one of the most common refrains from reform opponents who insists on cannabis as understudied despite the, the fact that it is one of the most frequently researched medical substances. This is true, yeah. To be sure, studying a plant that is the most widely used illicit substance in the world is something most people should agree to be continued, especially with most states legalizing in some form. But there is a, a broader societal misconception that is not 
adequately studied, and therefore too many unknowns to move ahead in policy reform. But according to analyst federalpubmed.gov says sites conduct by normal, there are more than 4,300 research articles published worldwide focusing on cannabis this year. That exceeds last year's total of only 4,200 marijuana studies that have published and listed in a federal database. Despite the claims that some marijuana has yet to be subjected to adequate sub scientific scrutiny, scientists insist that studying cannabis has increased exponentially in the recent years. It has our understanding of the plant, its active com components, their mechanics of action, and their effects on both user upon society. Normal Deputy Director Paul Amino Armentino said that in a blog post. So... In the previous article, we have the DEA now allowing other people to start looking into cannabis research. But we also have, in 2020, the most articles ever to come out about cannabis research. So if the federal government would actually just kind of step into and allow every all the articles and just start reading them and kind of proving them out, maybe that's what they're doing. I don't really know. But that would be a very good step. Either way, everything is kind of moving in the right direction for cannabis legalization federally. What all that means and who's going to be in charge is going to be a very, very big factor. So we're going to have to definitely pay close attention on how they move about and how they go forward with this. So it's definitely worth looking into and keeping tabs on. But then you also have things like this where you have former GOP Congressman and former NBA player launch a marijuana digital finance service as a federal banking reform stalls. So in in the Senate or in the House, whatever, the federal banking did not pass because they were not able to get it through the last omnibus bill, which was however many millions upon billions upon trillions, more money than we have. So they decided to okay that and spend a whole bunch more money, but they did not allow cannabis banking, which at a federal level, which would allow a lot of people to actually take out loans in a way to start their small businesses. Because right now it's so hard to get finances to do anything business related in the cannabis industry that either you have to have a lot of money or you need to know people with a lot of money and none of that stuff is secured. So if it all goes up in flames and it's all gone, you lose everything. So we definitely need something that has like FDIC backing. So when you do take out a loan, say you need to file bankruptcy, it's actually legit. You can sell off your stuff. You can, it's an actual loan that is much like your house loan, a normal business loan. You shouldn't have to jump through so many hoops just because you're a cannabis grower. In my eyes, it's no different than a microbrew or somebody who makes their own wine or somebody who has a winery or a vineyard or anything like that. I don't see any difference between alcohol and cannabis. They should be regulated very similarly and they should have different nuance groups within them. Like we have craft cannabis, we have craft microbrews, we have very specific craft wine. Like sommeliers can literally tell where a wine was grown and what grapes it was grown from. People are learning to do that in the cannabis world with like the terpenes and where those terpenes come from. And there's a whole science behind it that they're really developing. Look up like Gangier or the Trichome Institute is another one. That's the, something that I've done just to learn about the terpenes and the process. But something that kind of really annoys me about this entire thing is you have this GOP from New York, which is a Republican from New York who was not very vocal or advocate when it came to cannabis while he was in office. So as soon as he gets out of office, he decides, oh, now it's time to jump into cannabis banking and cannabis anything because he sees that it's going that way when if he was actually outspoken about it while he was actually in office, maybe we would have been there earlier. So people like this really annoy the shit out of me because you have like have some fucking morals, bro. And I understand that you have Mitch McConnell in Chuck Schumer or yeah, you have Senator, you have the Senate minority leader, Mitch McConnell, who is the worst 
Like he's, we're never going to get anything through. He's this old slow turtle that does nothing. Like it is sad. He has his own views. He has his own shit that he is doing and he doesn't give a fuck about anybody else. So, and unfortunately the rest of us are just like, Hey, where we would just like some weed. It's not that big a deal. Just why are we so obsessed with making it the devil's lettuce? Like it's not that fucking big a deal. We need actual education behind what it is, how to properly do it, how to not overdo it to the point you're just a fucking burnout because that's a possibility. And that's the stereotype with stoners. Like you're just a complete burnout when I know way more stoners that are very high productive in running businesses and running thing. I mean, I'm running a podcast right now about weed and about being a stoner. So we're really not any different or any, we're not unproductive members of society, even though we are painted in that light. So that's why we are trying to destroy the stereotype about cannabis use and what we're about. So it's very important to actually take some initiative and see what is going on in the news, because if we don't do anything politically, nothing changes. So it would be really nice to be able to just go to a smoke shop, be able to buy some joints or buy some weed, roll up a joint, sit down, listen to some music or watch a show and just smoke or hang out with some friends and order some food while you're smoking a joint. You get to do that while you're drinking a beer. Why can't we do that while we're smoking a joint? Nothing changes unless we're all actually paying attention. So that was pretty much most of my diatribe for today. There's not a whole lot that I else I see in the news because they're not even in office right now. They're completely taking their break for the rest of the year. Um, As soon as news breaks, I will see you guys with that. I mean, I'm doing a show every Monday and every Friday for the news. And in between the week, either on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, I will have out a cannabis review. So, So make sure you stay tuned. Comment, like, subscribe so you can see what else I got going on. And I will see you guys later. Peace out.